Did you know that a piece of uranium as small as a grape can generate enough energy to light up an entire neighborhood for a year? It sounds incredible, but it's a complex process that combines science, engineering, and decades of research. Let's discover step by step how natural uranium, extracted from deep within the Earth, is transformed into the enriched material that fuels nuclear reactors and is considered one of the world's most powerful resources. The path of enriched uranium is closely linked to the rise of nuclear energy. In 1896, French physicist Henri Becquerel made a surprising discovery. He discovered radioactivity by observing that uranium spontaneously emitted radiation. His discovery inspired Marie and Pierre Curie, who identified elements such as radium and polonium. Years later, in 1932, James Chadwick identified the neutron, a fundamental particle that would become key to nuclear fission. In 1938, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, with contributions from Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch, demonstrated that by bombarding a uranium atom with neutrons, it could be split into smaller parts, releasing enormous amounts of energy. The concept of nuclear fission was born. The challenge, however, was to develop a version of uranium more suitable for this process. Natural uranium is composed of 99.3% uranium-238, which does not fission easily, and just 0.7% uranium-235, which is ideal for fission. Hence, the need arose to enrich it, that is to increase the proportion of uranium-235. During World War II, the Manhattan Project tested different enrichment methods. One was gaseous diffusion, which used porous membranes to separate uranium hexafluoride. Another was electromagnetic separation, which used magnetic fields to deflect the lighter isotopes. Both systems were effective, but slow and energy intensive. In the 1950s, the introduction of gas centrifuges revolutionized the industry. These machines, which rotate at extremely high speeds, separate isotopes much more efficiently and with less energy expenditure. Their design was so strategic that it was treated as a state secret. In 1951, the first experimental reactor in Idaho, known as Breeder Reactor 1, used enriched uranium to produce electricity for the first time, lighting four light bulbs. Three years later, in 1954, the Obninsk plant in the Soviet Union became the first nuclear power plant to be connected to the electrical grid, using 5% enriched uranium. Today, enriched uranium fuels the reactors responsible for generating approximately 10% of the world's electricity. But how does this mineral, extracted from the Earth, become such a powerful source of energy? Uranium is found in deposits located throughout the world, in the deserts of Australia, the steppes of Kazakhstan and the rock formations of Canada. These three regions account for around 70% of global production. The mineral does not occur in its pure state, but rather in compounds such as uraninite or pitchblende. Its concentration in the rock is usually low, between 0.1% and 2%. Three types of mines are used to obtain it open pit, where huge excavators remove the earth, underground, which requires deep tunnels, or the in-situ leaching technique, which dissolves the uranium directly underground by injecting chemical solutions such as sulfuric acid. The mined material is taken to nearby plants for initial processing. There, it is ground into very fine grains, similar to coarse sand. It is then mixed with chemicals in large metal tanks that help separate the uranium from other minerals, such as iron ore or quartz. The result of this process is a bright yellow powder called yellow cake, or uranium oxide. This product contains approximately 80% pure uranium. Although its radioactivity is low, it must be handled with protective suits, masks and ventilation systems to avoid inhaling particles. A single ton of this dust can generate as much energy as several million tons of coal. This is the first sign of the enormous potential it holds. The yellow cake is sent to specialized plants where it is converted into uranium hexafluoride, UF6, a compound that can easily transform from solid to gas at temperatures of about 56 degrees Celsius. This property makes it ideal for the enrichment process. The yellow cake is first purified to remove any impurities such as sulfur or magnesium. Then, through chemical reactions with hydrofluoric acid and heat in sealed reactors, UF6 is obtained. This material is stored in large steel cylinders specially designed to resist its corrosive nature as it can react with moisture and become toxic. 
At room temperature, hexafluoride can crystallize into a greenish hue, which technicians call nuclear snow because of its unusual appearance. Although it's beautiful to look at, it requires specialized equipment to handle. This is where the most critical phase of the process begins, enrichment. The goal is to increase the concentration of the uranium-235 isotope to 5%, the optimal level for use in commercial reactors. To achieve this, gas centrifuges are used, high-precision cylindrical machines that spin at over 50,000 revolutions per minute inside vacuum chambers. When UF6 gas is injected, centrifugal force separates the isotopes. The lighter uranium-235 concentrates toward the center, while the heavier uranium-238 remains on the periphery. Centrifuges operate in cascades, hundreds or thousands of interconnected centrifuges that gradually refine the uranium. Their balance is so delicate that even a slight change in their weight could destabilize them. The process is silent, but internal vibrations generate a constant hum. To ensure stability, these facilities feature sensors and control systems that adjust speed in real time. A single centrifuge can process tons of gas per year, and in Europe, there are plants with entire buildings dedicated to this process, operating continuously for decades. Once enriched, the UF6 gas is transformed back into a solid through controlled chemical reactions, becoming uranium oxide. This extremely fine powder is pressed into molds to form small cylindrical pellets, similar to a coin, one centimeter in diameter. Each pellet weighs about seven grams. They are then fired in special ovens at over 1,000 degrees Celsius, making them very dense and resistant, able to withstand high temperatures and radiation. A single pellet is equivalent in energy to the combustion of a ton of coal. To ensure quality, each piece undergoes rigorous controls. X-rays to detect microscopic cracks, laser scanners that precisely measure its dimensions, and spectrometers that confirm the absence of impurities. These pellets are placed inside metal tubes made of zirconium, a material that resists corrosion and allows neutrons to pass through without absorbing them. The tubes, approximately four meters long, can hold up to 400 precisely aligned pellets. Specialized robots assemble them under controlled conditions to prevent contamination. Finally, the tubes are sealed by laser welding and assembled into structures called fuel assemblies, weighing approximately 500 kilograms. Each assembly includes thousands of individually inspected welds to ensure safety. At this stage, although the prepared fuel emits a relatively low level of radiation, it is inside the reactor that its true potential is unleashed. The fuel assemblies, containing thousands of uranium pellets, are carefully introduced into the reactor core. There, they are placed in a precise geometric arrangement designed to optimize the neutron flux and ensure the reaction can be kept under control. The core is surrounded by thick steel and concrete structures that act as safety barriers. The process occurring inside is nuclear fission. When a neutron strikes a uranium-235 atom, the nucleus splits into two smaller fragments, releasing an enormous amount of energy in the form of heat and new neutrons. These neutrons impact other nearby atoms, triggering a chain reaction that continues continuously. To prevent it from running out of control, the reactor is equipped with control rods made of materials such as boron or cadmium, capable of absorbing neutrons and slowing the reaction when necessary. The heat generated in the core warms the water in the primary circuit, which turns it into extremely high-pressure steam. This steam is directed toward enormous turbines that spin at high speed, which, when coupled with generators, transform the mechanical energy into electricity. The entire system is automated and constantly monitored to ensure stability and efficiency. A single modern nuclear reactor can produce more than 750 megawatts of electricity, enough energy to continuously power some 500,000 homes. Moreover, it does so with virtually no carbon dioxide emissions, making this technology a key component of global strategies to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and mitigate the impact of climate change. After about a year of use inside the reactor, the fuel rods have released most of their energy. However, they remain extremely radioactive and continue to generate heat due to the decay of the elements formed after fission. For this reason, they cannot be handled directly. Robotic arms and automated systems are used to extract the rods from the core and transport them to their next destination, the cooling pools. These pools, installed inside nuclear power plants, are approximately 8 meters deep and filled with ultra-pure water. 
the water performs two critical functions. First, it cools the rods, dissipating the heat they still emit, and second, it blocks radiation, acting as a natural protective barrier. The water's temperature, clarity and purity are constantly monitored by pumping and filtration systems. A very characteristic visual phenomenon frequently appears in these pools, a blue glow known as Cherenkov radiation. It occurs when charged particles move through the water at a speed greater than the speed of light in that medium. Although striking, this effect does not pose a risk as long as safety protocols are followed. After cooling for several years, the spent fuel is transferred to dry containers made of steel and reinforced concrete. These structures are designed to withstand extreme conditions, such as earthquakes or impacts, and allow for safe storage for decades or even centuries. At the same time, some countries are developing projects to bury spent fuel in deep geological repositories, excavated in stable rock formations, with the aim of permanently isolating them and ensuring they do not pose a risk to future generations. Nuclear energy remains one of the most promising alternatives for a sustainable future. It generates very little waste, emits no greenhouse gases during operation, and provides a constant electricity supply. With the development of new technologies, improved storage systems, and increasingly stringent safety measures, atomic energy will continue to be an ally in lighting entire cities reliably, cleanly, and efficiently. And that's how enriched uranium goes from being a rock hidden in the ground to becoming the material that fuels one of the world's most powerful energy sources. Enriched uranium is undoubtedly one of the most influential materials of the modern era. From its extraction in remote mines to its conversion into reactor fuel, each step reflects an impressive level of precision and control. Thanks to this process, it is now possible to generate clean, consistent electricity for millions of people around the world. Beyond the myths and controversies, nuclear energy remains a key element in the challenge of building a more sustainable future with a lower environmental impact.